Yeah, uh, I mean, we had a team meeting in Jacksonville, like six o'clock, and that was like the last meeting of the day. And then after that, the general manager came up to me and he was like, hey, Joe, I need to see you in my office. I was like, who? It's never a good thing when a general manager asks that, but uh, you know, I found out, I think, before pretty much anything. I hear about people finding out on Twitter all the time. They, they were able to tell me and get me uh, notified before stuff like that happened. So you were sad? Well, I wasn't sad, but it was, it was kind of stressful, especially during the middle of training camp, because you got a wife and kid, dog, house down in Jacksonville, and going to have to figure out logistics of moving them up. Um, but I wouldn't say I was sad, no. Just a little stressful, a little uh, shock to the system. Did you know that something like that was coming, that you could potentially be a piece that was moved in Jacksonville? No, I think it came out of the blue uh, from my perspective. Um, nothing really, there was no warning signs or no, like, predetermined stuff. I was talking to defensive coaches right after I talked to the general manager and they were pretty shocked about it. So I think it's kind of something that just came out of the blue and just happened, I guess. Joe, they didn't waste any time putting you with the ones. Uh, you know what your role is going to be here. You're a guy who's played 100%, 99% of defensive snaps. Is it the same thing, just different colored jersey? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they, yeah, they said they threw me on the field playing with the ones today, which is good because all those guys know that with their communication they can help me uh, if I've got questions out on the field pre-snap um, is just jumping both feet right in I had a lot of meetings yesterday and today to get the basic installs um, written down and put into my memory bank and just got to get out here and start getting reps at it. It looked like you talked with Spillane even before practice started and talking to Devin throughout. Yeah yeah definitely yeah. How'd all that go? It was good uh, Spillane uh, and Devin were great great assets and uh, walk through and on the field just getting they were able to vocally like set all the calls and then I was able to just kind of focus in on my job today and not have to worry about doing too much communication except for what was immediately necessary for me so, so it's good uh, leaving Jacksonville what explanation did you get for as to why they made the trade uh, general manager just told me that Pittsburgh called 12 hours before I had a meeting with them and was very uh, persistent in trying to get a deal done to get me up here so that was the reason that he said he's like, there's a good situation. I wouldn't put you in it if it wasn't a good situation for you and your family um, coming up to Pittsburgh, getting on a good team. So that's what, I, that's what I was told. What's your reaction to coming to Pittsburgh, just your impression of the Steelers? I mean, I think it's a first-class organization. You just see that. I've seen it through the meetings, talking to the coaches. Everybody's been here a long time. And people know uh, what the standard is. Um, it's, it's understood in meetings and practice. Uh, how to take care of your bodies and from the top down. So it's been nothing but a, a surprise or a pleasant surprise for me coming here. I haven't talked to him too much. Just he's happy to be here or happy for me to be here. Um, looking forward to getting ready to work. He's basically given me to uh, DC, the DC and uh, what's the uh, I'm blanking on his name right now, but <laughs> Keith. Yeah, Keith Butler. Uh, I've been with Keith a lot the last. 24, 48 hours um, learning the defense, and that's basically the guy I've been talking to most. And then, yeah, Jerry O with the linebacker stuff. What about your uh, great games against this team? I don't know. It just always seemed to happen. The stars would align when I play in the Steelers, get some interceptions, get some turnovers. Uh, we didn't win a lot of them, but we won a couple. So, you know, what you're doing of... here, your role, is it similar to what you've done anywhere else in your career? Um, I mean, it's similar. There's a lot of I've, this will be my sixth scheme in six years now, learning. So I've done a lot of similar things. There's some new stuff, but mostly the biggest difference is the lo, uh, the jargon, the the language of the defense. Just getting that on on par with everybody else and being able to communicate when I'm on the field. I mean, hopefully by Saturday, the game, I'll be able to at least run the basic stuff um, pretty confidently. And then as the games go on, season progresses, it'll just get more comfortable. And it's just going to take reps. I don't, I don't know how many reps I'll get uh, before it'll feel great, uh, <laughs> before I'll be 100% comfortable making all the calls and uh, communicating with everybody on defense. But I'm, I think it'll be a pretty fluid and pretty easy process, especially with all the veterans that are on the defense already. What's the schematic stuff you did in Jacksonville and Cleveland? Basically the last two years you were there, and then now in Pittsburgh. Do you see that there is a lot of difference there? or? No, from the from my scheme in Jacksonville last year, scheme in Jacksonville this year, and the scheme in Cleveland in what 2019, it's totally different than those ones. It's more similar to my uh, rookie year in Cleveland when Ray Horton was a defensive coordinator. It's more along those lines, but even it's 
not too close to that. It's just, uh, it'll be a new, it's a new adjustment, but it's, uh, hopefully it'll be a smooth one, like I said. Joe, do you think you're going to be the uh, dime linebacker and single caller eventually? Yeah, that's what they're, uh, they've got me at now, just learning the dime, um, dime linebacker and the, the Mac backer and OP personnel. So just getting that stuff uh, underway. And once the, so once the season starts, getting the green dot on the helmet, getting the calls from the coaches. So that was the plan. Was there a lot different between last year's Jacksonville scheme and what they're asking you to do this year? In Jacksonville? Yeah, between. Yeah, oh, yeah, the scheme is totally different. It was 4 3 last year, a lot of cover three base um, personnel, uh, a little bit of blitzing. This year is uh, 3 4 4 3 kind of hybrid, a lot of blitzing. Um, and it's all, everything's somewhat similar in coverage. Like we've run similar schemes, but the overall mentality in Jacksonville is totally different this year. Can you talk Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, how good does it feel to just be out here and getting used to this defense and these guys? Man, it feels good. Uh, we got a couple of new faces uh, trying to get people in positions now to figure out where everyone's going to be. But, man, it feels good to be back out here with the guys, uh, going at it every day, talking in the locker room, all the camaraderie that comes with that. It's just a good experience. There's some necessary change that happens with a defense like this, but do you feel that it can still be elite, be what it's been? Definitely. I definitely feel like we're still striving every day to be the number one defense. I know last year we were up in the top ranks, but uh, this year we want to be number one. We don't want to take anything less of that. Uh, we're going to come out here every day, work as if we are the number one defense, and then go out and play games like that. So what do you think Schilbert brings to you guys, and what are early conversations with him? Man, he's a dog. I, I barely talked to him uh, today. Uh, we, we're just getting out, get to used to know each other and everything, but um, he was out there making some calls. It seems like he pretty much knows part of the defense, at least when he was out there with us today. He was already out making some calls. And... Yeah, he's out there with us running today. Where are you at physically, and what was your off-season procedure you had? Oh, no, I feel good now. Um, I had a shoulder injury earlier off-season. Uh, just still trying to get back from that, but uh, going in the right direction. I played last week, so just keep on taking those steps forward uh, and get ready for the season. You, you've always talked to me about finding your next level, mm -hmm. whatever that happens to be. What is it this year? What, what's, what's your area of focus? Not just getting better, like something specific. Man, honestly, just stacking on to a great year. I felt like last year I took a, a big step, and then this coming up year, just take another step. Just keep on constantly uh, going in the right direction, uh, helping out my team win games, uh, just making the plays as necessary. You know what I mean? Just being out there, be that safety for them. What can you and Minka do better? Just stay on our communication. Minka's Minka. I'm Terrell, so we, we're going to be out there communicating together, just continually growing. And um, this is our third year together, I believe. So it's not, we're going to keep on growing, keep on getting better together. I know you're only halfway through camp and there's not been game plans whatever else, so it might not be a fair question to say, but in terms of packages, sub-packages, is it similar to previous seasons in terms of using the dime, nickel, uh, you know, base, that kind of thing? Man, that's, that's the question that we're going to see. Uh, Coach Tomlin probably can answer that one better than me, but, uh, man, hopefully everything, you know, he's going to put us in the right positions to be great. So how do you see the battle at the slot between, I know Antoine's been hurt for a couple of days, but how does Arthur fit in as well? Man, it's like a coach T saying, two dogs, one bone. They're both out there making plays. They both have uh, certain skill sets with their abilities, and they're both out there just going at it. Uh, like you said, Twan, he's been down for a few days, but he's going to come back with a full head of steam ready to compete. So it's all about competition out here. Everybody's out here competing. That's what we do every day. We talked to you, I think, and, you know, but, I mean, the option thing, is, is that something you're part of your contract now? It's a contract year. People always talk about, you know, contract years, what that means. Does that do anything to you? Of course. Of course. I mean, we out here, we playing this contract here. Uh, take it up and I just keep on growing, uh, keep being a great player, and then just go out there, help my team win. Uh, put it all out there on the field this year. Uh, make them make a tough decision if they want to bring me back or not, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to give everything I got to this team. Bro, there's been a lot of talk about Haskins. How much have you seen him improve since, say, OTAs the first time you saw him? Man, he's out there. He's making some plays. Uh, the quarterback position battle is is just the same. They're both out there. They're both competing. Uh, they're all just going out there trying to make each other better. It's pushing everybody to be their best player that they can be.